Hey guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do what you got to do, YouTube world. Uh, for everybody else, follow us on social media at the FF Sackos and go ahead and check out our website, the fantasy football sackos.com for everything you need fantasy football this season. Let's go. Welcome to the fantasy football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shalcross and Alex Krog. Let's go! All right! We are saving sauce, ladies and gentlemen. Just trying to help out the world. Jason Shalcross, <laughs> Alex Krog, back again with the Fantasy Football Sackos. Today we are going to be talking about our... Uh, we're going to do another round of stud... Sacco sleeper Alex I had no idea you were a belly dancer <laughs> uh, yeah I've actually gotten a lot better at that as I've gotten older because my stomach has gotten bigger oh, I think that's how that works is that yeah. so is that how uh, <laughs> is that what you did to woo your now very pregnant wife yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I did. It, it's amazing. Like I can really suck it in when I need to, but uh-huh. you know, when you relax, it really gets the good flow. Very similar to my hair. So, yep, ready to go. We've got a got a fun, fun little sackos, uh, sleepers, and studs episode. Trying to highlight some people we haven't really talked about. Highlighting some other people we have talked about as kind of like friendly yeah. reminders of who you want to be targeting. It's going to be good stuff. I, and I have a kid on the way, so we got to get content out before uh, before I have a kid. So I don't know what good. we're going to do when that happens. It's, it's yeah. going to be I'm going to miss you a lot. Well, you'll be OK, I promise, because <laughs> hopefully football is starting. So hey. training, training camps are starting up and it seems like the NFL and the players have an agreement. So we're we're ready to go. Hopefully. Yeah. The NFL offered to do no preseason games. So yes, yes, thank you, yes. NFL. Now, I mean, the big question is how they're going to be splitting up all this money because it's not going to be how as much money as they thought. But I'm confident there's going to be a season. If everybody else can work it out, the NFL's got to work it out. Let's hope so. I need my Sundays to be on the couch watching my fantasy teams ruin people. Yeah, and they should follow the NBA's lead and build a little barbershop hut in every little NFL city right outside. (laughs) Yeah, just for the players. I agree. (laughs) Exactly. All right, let's get into these stud sacko sleepers. Alex, you take it out. Who's your uh, who's your stud this season? Oh, coming in hot. That's a good question. Um, so I'm I'm going to kind of highlight somebody that we haven't really talked about. He's he just broke his foot, and so theoretically he would have been a stud, but now he's kind of like, where should I draft Debo Samuel? Um, mm-hmm. Because I I don't know if I know what the answer is. I don't know if anybody really knows what the answer is. Honestly, right? Uh, he he was uh, the 29th ranked wide receiver last year, so a very solid wide receiver three. Uh, he had the 39th most catches. He had the 50 most 50th most targets. 35th in yards and three receiving touchdowns. Uh, It should also be noted that he had 14 carries for just about 160 yards and three rushing touchdowns. So that was very much a part of his um, part of his game uh, was being used as misdirection uh, reverses and just kind of like a decoy a lot of times. Uh, So during the, during his rookie year, uh, which was last year, he was on the field for 67% of offensive snaps. Uh, But from weeks 10 through 17, he was on the field 82% of the time. So I like, I like that a little Uh, bit during those weeks from uh, weeks 10 to 17, he was wide receiver nine. Oh, is that all football? Yeah, so, you know, just your run-of-the-mill wide receiver one, doing doing okay as a rookie. should also be noted that uh, some of that kind of coincided with Emmanuel Sanders uh, joining the 49ers. They traded for him in week seven, and then um, Debo Samuel came back from injury in week eight. So, 
you know, once, once kind of all the pieces were there, Debo kind of really hit his stride. Um, he had over 10 fantasy points uh, in 10 out of the last 12 games, which is what you're looking for. Uh, during that stretch, he had five touchdowns um, and in a half a point PPR league. Uh, the average the last 12 games was just under 13 points a week. So, again, I like that. Um, now the downside is, is that he, uh, has a Jones fracture in his foot and he did that a couple months ago. Uh, the rehab time for that is somewhere in the 10 to 16 week range. Uh, 16 weeks puts him at October 8th, which would be week five. Uh, so that throws him or makes him definitely a candidate for the pup list, uh, as we've kind of talked about previously. Uh, for those of you that do not know what the pup list is, that means that a uh, player cannot uh, practice or play the first six weeks of the season. And then uh, after week six, the player is allowed to start practicing. Um, or he can play um, once he's activated, but he has to be either placed on injured reserve or um, he has to be part of the roster within the next five weeks. So it essentially gives them until like week 10, week 11 to, to be activated on the pup list. Um, it should also be noted that the 49ers kind of dealt with this last year because yep. um, deep, very deep sleeper this year, Trent Taylor, um, Went, th went through the same injury. He tried to come back too soon. He had five different surgeries on his foot Ow. Um, last year and, and missed the entire season after having a pretty good rapport with Ow. Mr. Garoppolo. Uh, so that, that kind of kind of sucks, but he's back now. So, you know, Trent, Trent Taylor sleeper. There's, there's a little plug for Trent Taylor. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what else to say about Debo other than the fact that I hope that this doesn't ruin his career. Um, and, and for whatever reason, like it seems like the 49ers have a lot of injuries all the time. Uh, I, I don't really know what to attribute that to, but it just seems like their players get hurt a lot. Where, so I, where is Debo's ADP? Uh, Debo's current ADP 65. So, so middle of the sixth, mi middle of the sixth. He's currently the 28th wide receiver going off the board. Um, I have him at wide receiver 31. You have him at wide receiver 42. Yeah. ESPN has him at 44. Yeah. Um, so, right. The question is, you're in the middle of the sixth round. If he comes back healthy at the end of the year, you could be looking at a wide receiver one at the end of the year um, when he when he's healthy or he's he's performing at a wide receiver one level. Um, so I. It just depends on, on kind of what your philosophy is and, and what you want to, you know, do you want to roll the risk? You know, so the Orthopedic Journal of Sports, here's some research for you. They stated that 50 percent of all players with Jones fractures demonstrated incomplete healing. Uh, moreover, position specific performance scores over the first two years of a player's career were lower across all positions for those with fractures. Um compared to those who did not. So that's the, that's from um, doctors that are doing um, scouting combine evaluations where these players just are not healing properly or they're not giving the proper amount of time to heal. Uh, I mean, Debo's tweeted already that he's going to be back um, for the regular season and he was only going to be out yeah, 10 buddy. weeks. So, you know, that's, that's tough. Um, the 49ers also drafted Brandon Ayuk. Am I stating that correctly? Ayuk? Ayuk? I don't know. Anyway, he the, he was their second first round pick this year out of Arizona State. And the only reason I bring him up is because he kind of fits what Debo Samuel was already doing that offense. So last year in college, um, he led the nation in yards after catch. So he's like a bigger guy that can kind of bulldoze some people over and he's really fast. So, you know, an, another Kyle Shanahan special where, you know, where they're just running misdirection all over the place and he's going to fit in the offense. Uh, 49ers playoff schedule home against Washington, which is nice at Dallas, which mm. dome. Yeah, I really likes it. And then at Arizona, which which should be high scoring. Also um, in a dome. Also dome, which is great. Um, so that's that's a good playoff schedule um, for hopefully when he gets healthy at the end of the year. Um, so, yeah, it just comes down to what is your 
like critical mass for taking him in the sixth round to potentially get a, a wide receiver one. That's fine. Kind of depends. Like, I think you can plan on drafting him. It also depends on if you have an IR slot on your roster where you can take him and then stash him. And then you just kind of forget that he's sitting down in your IR spot, not taking up a, a spot on your bench. And then when he is eventually active, if he's not at the beginning of the season and, that, and starts on the pup list, then, you know, week seven, week eight, week nine, you have a, a nice little plug and play there. Uh, if you can survive the first couple weeks with, with him out. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to highlight him. He's not getting talked about much because he's going so late. Um, but again, when he was healthy at the end of, of last season, he was wide receiver nine. So, um, I, I had him on my team. He was great last year. Uh, so just, I, I know we're talking about studs. He doesn't technically fall in the stud category, but he is a stud if he's healthy, but he's not healthy. So it just depends yeah. on what you want to do with him. I would say my couple two cents on Debo is when he first got hurt, I was like, oh, his ADP won't fall or it shouldn't. It, or if it does, it'll fall, you know, shortly, but it'll be right back where it was before yeah. the season starts. And then I you know, actually like looked into like the medical side of fantasy football Twitter and was quickly educated on why everybody thinks that he's going to like a shoe in to start the season on the pup. And at that right. point, it's like there's nothing worse than holding a guy for five to six weeks and then just like just say he comes out of the gate slow for two weeks or whatever, just getting back up to speed and then it's like, why did I draft this guy, let alone spend a sixth round pick on him? Like, if I could get him in the eighth, I'd be open to it, I think. But like the sixth, I'm so risk averse, especially in the first half of a draft that I really don't want to pick a guy that I don't think is going to play for the first like close to two months of the season. So and that's that's fair. I, I, I'm not going to disagree with any of that, but I, I will also say that, you know, if you're doing your research and you are able to target the people we talked about last time, whether it's Seamus and Crowder, or, you know, Cooks is going right, right in that range. So, you yeah. know, would you want to have Debo or Cooks? You'd probably want to have Cooks I would because Cooks. he's going to play the, play the whole year. Right. So, but if you can target the Alshon Jeffries, the, the crowders late that you know are you know potential to get you through those first five or six weeks then could you know would you feel more comfortable taking a flyer on a guy that could well outperform his adp once he's healthy um and just kind of bridge bridge the gap you know the more research yeah, that you right, do right and you're able you're able to fill in afterwards to be able to take that risk i'm actually I'm actually cool with with going and trying to find, you know, reaching a little bit and taking those guys that once they're healthy, once they're back and all of a sudden you look at your roster, you're like, how the hell did I get these guys? Um, you know, like the the Melvin Gordons of the world where you didn't know if he was going to sit out the whole year or if he was going to come back. And then all of a sudden, once he comes back, you're like, oh, hey, this is great. Well, it wasn't even I mean, it's not just him. We saw Edelman do it after uh, what his suspension, I believe. Aaron Jones right. was suspended. A lot of guys have come back and been solid, you know, running back wide receiver one slash two kind of guys. So it's certainly plausible. Um I'd hate it if Jimmy found a new favorite target in the meantime, though. That would be. <laughs> no, I know, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, it was only the one season, so it's not like they have a huge rapport. But, yeah, you'd figure he would hopefully step right back into that same role that he had. Um, right. Yeah. I, I, I could see it. I, if you plan on getting that later wide receiver values, like I would probably carry – a fifth receiver then or something to try and make up for him. As far as having an IR slot, if there's any commissioner that doesn't have an IR slot in the COVID season, like <laughs> that would be brutal for that league. But yeah, we can, we can talk about that later, but I'm almost leaning towards, you know, having unlimited IR slots at this point. I like it. Um, just because, well, for, like you only get one for injury, but if anybody ends up on the COVID injury list, like you shouldn't have to drop somebody to pick somebody up. Yeah. Um, I've also seen this. Um, some leagues are doing, if you draft a quarterback, you automatically get that quarterback's backup, which I think is interesting. Uh, 
get out of here with that. Well, if your quarterback gets COVID and then you could just be screwed, especially if it's like the two quarterback leagues where all starting quarterbacks get drafted and then you're one of, you know, the only starting quarterbacks goes down and then what this just goes to waivers and then that player doesn't get to start anyone. So yeah, I might. Yeah. I would probably take Drew Brees a little bit earlier just to get Taysom Hill locked in. (laughs) (laughs) This is not the content that anybody wants. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Nobody, no, nobody has commented on our videos and said, please tell me more about Taysom Hill. <laughs> and the day that somebody comments on our video and says, please tell me more about Taysom Hill. I will give please, you a dollar, my friend. Please somebody do that. And I will, I will give you five minutes on why Taysom Hill is great. Oh God. You couldn't come up with th- uh, 50 seconds, let alone five minutes. Oh, I will. Is that a challenge? Yeah. No, no, because I don't want that. I don't want that to take up a five minute segment of podcast time. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fair. It's not a challenge. <laughs> oh, man. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. So Debo, Debo Samuel. Yes. He's great. You just got to figure out when to pull the trigger on him when he's healthy. Hopefully he comes back healthy. He was a stud last year and it just comes down to what it, we don't know what he's going to do this year because of the Jones fracture. And yeah, uh, if like some interesting research, like do some research on the Jones fracture, it like, it's not a good thing to to have and it's not super easy to heal from. So that's it. That It's a, it's a clear concern. Yeah. It's just so hard to heal because like, there's no blood circulation to that area like at all. So yeah. All right. Um, uh, my stud, Back to the more traditional side of things. Who are you looking at, stud? Yeah, there you go. It's not Taysom Hill, I can tell you that. Damn it. My stud this season is Devontae Adams. That's right, Packer fans. Live it up. I've done nothing but say foul things about your team. Probably your state, your city, all of the above. As I am a Chicago Bears fan, very loyally. Um... But I think Devontae Adams could ha- could very well finish as a top two receiver. And if if uh, if Michael Thomas isn't out here catching 200, 300 footballs, then I feel like uh, Devontae Adams has a very legitimate shot at being wide receiver one. Um, so, I mean, I feel like he has all the tools to do it and more. So Devontae Adams... Uh, last season finished 14th in targets. He got hurt. Uh, He was to illustrate that point while he finished 14th in total targets at 127 on the season. He finished second in targets per game at just over 10 and a half targets a game. Uh, He had the 13th highest target share, which is a percentage of all passes going to him. Um, as, as a part of his uh, team's total passes, uh, he commanded more than 22% of all passes thrown by Packers. Again, he's commanded 22% of all Packer passes while missing significant amounts of time due to injury. Uh, and his team was 16th in pass attempts. Now, the Packers didn't draft a wide receiver. They got rid of Jimmy Graham, who was third in Green Bay passes last season or third in Green Bay receptions. And they got rid of Geronimo Allison, who was fourth in Green Bay receptions. And they didn't add anyone other than A.J. Dillon at a running back. So like Devin Funches doesn't count. I meant via the draft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, so, I, no, I know. I, like if, if somebody's, if somebody's question, well, they added Devin Funches. Yeah, like the, he, literally he's De- the Devin fourth Funches receiver on that team still. Like, so I don't like those targets have to go somewhere. I feel like they either go to Devonte Adams, Aaron Jones, or Alan Lazard. And if Devonte Adams gets more targets somehow, then you're talking like MVS level usage. So I think he could absolutely his. So he had, he only had four single point games and he missed four games. 
his projected single se- single game season would have been 169 targets, 111 catches, more nice. than 1,300 yards, <laughs> and seven total <laughs> touchdowns. Touchdowns are such a fluky stat. I mean, he's he's the Rodgers like third down target. He's Rodgers first down target, red zone target, like fourth down. Conver- he's the he's the only target. Yes, yes, he is. Um, I think he's an absolute stud, and I think he's going to have a freaking heck of a year. He's our consensus four. Um, I have him higher than that. ESPN has him at five. Um. And his ADP is currently 13th. So you can get him at the wrap. And I see, like, I think he's going to like without, without a doubt, I think he's going to outperform that. But yeah, I, I it's going to be tough when, you know, Tyreek Hill or Devonte Adams and Hopkins and Julio are just sitting there staring at you. And you're like, which, which one do I take? It's, they're all so close. If you um, pick outside of the top three, you're just going to be tempted because it's like after uh, McCaffrey, Zeke and Saquon without Dalvin signing a contract still, then it's like I, you, you probably have to go Michael Thomas there. But then after that, it's like, do I want Josh Jacobs or do I want you know, what could be the number one, number two overall receiver? It's like, I don't. Do I, I want I highly 11 suggest targets everybody. a game at receiver, you know? Yeah, everybody should take Leonard Fournette in the first round at pick five, just for the record. I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's it's a tough thing of like where, you know, all four of those guys, I, th- you know, could be one, two, three. Like, they're all just so, so evenly bunched. And Devontae has that this massive target share yeah where you know when you know when he played i think he was i think he had a 31 percent target share like that's that's just outrageous yeah so yeah and you take out the third and fourth receivers yeah so yeah i mean it's it's all the question you know it's Devonte's health, Tyreek's target share or targets, period, because he has targets, he period. has the freak athletic ability, and then Julio can't get into the end zone, but he has all the you know he has the yards Con- and consistency, yeah. right? And, and Hopkins is just as consistent and but new team, which is question, right? So, so of those four, it's like who who has the highest floor? It's almost like Devonte does. I would take Devonte out of those four, right? Right from, from a floor perspective. But if you're looking for a boomer bust, I th- think Tyreek is wait, like I have him at two. But I mean, Julio's great too. And if he had if he actually ever scored more than like five touchdowns in a year, he'd be he would also be great. Right. And and DeAndre is one of the most talented wide receivers in football. So like I feel like if I'm not in the top th- two picks, honestly, then it's Michael Thomas. And then so you said two. So you're taking Michael Thomas over Zeke. Yeah, I would just because Mike McCarthy's never had a a great fantasy running back. Okay, he's also never had a Zeke before. No, that's fair, but it's just one of those things where I I'll be able to find running backs later. Running backs are the most you know injury prone position. That's just my mentality on it. I can always find a running back. I can. It's really difficult to find a number one wide receiver later. Gotcha. You mean even if you're playing waiver wire and whatnot for running back or. Yeah, like I, I would rather say save the sauce um, and and find find that running back that gets hurt later because there's mo- there's a higher chance of them getting injured than there is a, a wide receiver getting injured. And then you're so, claiming and chasing backups later and you still have the wide receiver on your team and then you're potentially adding that stud running back later in the season. Exactly. So, you're, so that's uh, that's yeah. That's why I've always been more zero RB first round, fan. F- first, well, no, not necessarily, but definitely first round wide receiver. Uh, and I'm even cool with taking taking Lamar in the second or tight end early too, because I I've just always hey once I get my wide receivers and my other positions, I can just take like 15 running backs the rest of the draft and hopefully one or two of them pops off and I'll be okay. But that's that's just always been my strategy. As evidenced so. by our mock draft, you can watch our mock draft podcast episode. Um, yeah, that was exemplified. 
Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much what I do every year and pretty much every league and it's worked out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Sackos. These are guys that we think will underperform their current ADP. It doesn't mean that we think you were going to lose your leagues. If you take them, it just means that we are not thoroughly impressed with where they are going currently. Um, Alex, why don't you take it out? All right, Sacco. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about AJ Green. Um, he's such like a... Is any of value, though? He's just like a mystery, though. So, like, he's been... <laughs> this is going to be his 10th year in the league. I don't think I've ever had him on a team either. Um, in, this t- uh, in his nine years, he's played 16 games four times. Uh, he did not play in a single football game last year. Well, that he was only played not. Was that because of injury or contract, though? Like, honestly, I think I think he was injured, mm. but then it was also contract related. I think he had like a bum ankle. Don't quote me on that. It, well, that's what the injury was all season, but it doesn't mean it was like a legitimate injury in my mind. I felt like he was like, I hate my contract. I hate this team. I I don't like my quarterback. He's not any good. Like, I'm not doing this this season and i think maybe he just took a year off i don't know okay and that that's a guy that you just are like oh man this guy really loves football and i'm sure he's gonna give it his all all the time when he just sits out a year what's his adp where are we getting his current ad his current adp is 59 which is the end of round five i i mean that's He's he's the 25th wide receiver going Okay, but he's also the number one wide receiver in that offense. Is he? I, are, are we sure? Yes. Yes. I don't I, see. I disagree with you because I think it's Tyler Boyd. Okay, I think Tyler Boyd is the is the number one wide receiver in that offense. Tyler Boyd so, did very well while it Tyler was gone. Boyd had a hundred. Tyler Boyd had one hundred and forty eight targets last year. Uh-huh. AJ Green had that many in his career twice. In 2012 and 2013, that was seven years ago. Gotcha. Is uh, so, is Andy Dalton still there throwing the ball? To uh, uh, the the Ninja Ginja is no longer <laughs> the quarterback in <laughs> in Cincinnati. Do people call him that? No, I don't think so. <laughs> but but they should. If they, if they don't. Ninja uh, Ginja. <laughs> What? I love it. Um, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, ninja, ninja. We need ninja, to. Ninja. We need to make some sound bites for this, man. <laughs> I want to press a button, and I want karate chops and ninja ginger to go across. All right, go on. No, yeah. So, like. Now that he's gone and so somebody somebody took him out by sweeping his leg and now Joe, Joe Burrow is the is the starting quarterback there. Um, yeah, I, I just think Tyler Boyd is is the number one number one wide receiver in that offense. Boyd was on the field for 89 percent of snaps um, from a size different. AJ, AJ Green, 6'4", he's 210. Uh, Tyler Boyd, 6'2", 203. So there's not that big of a difference uh, size wide. Size wise, I should say, um, for reference, Tyler Boyd was a 23rd ranked wide receiver last year. Fantasy points wise, he had the eighth most catches. Um, he had, so that was 90 catches. He had the seventh most targets in football and he only had the 22nd most yards. Wow. And I, and I would expect all of those to increase with a better quarterback. Um, also, uh, last year's quarterback was Ryan Finley for three games. I, I don't know. I did not know who that was. I couldn't I tell you anything name. about him. No, nope. So uh, Tyler Boyd had the seventh most yards out of the slot last year. He averaged 13.8 yards of reception out of the slot. And according to pro football focus, um, AJ Green was not ranked lower than the 11th best wide receiver from 2012 to 2018. So he's always been really good when he plays. But the question is, will he play? Um, Tyler Boyd was the ninth ranked slot receiver the last two years. So like so we we already mentioned A.J. Green's current ADP is 59, which is the end of round five, 25th wide receiver going. Tyler Boyd's current ADP going. 
is 85, which is the beginning of round eight. And he's currently the 35th wide receiver going. Oh, boy. So I, I question why Tyler Boyd's as low as he is. Um, I question why A.J. Green is is going where he is. Um, again, he's going to be 32. So I personally, I have A.J. Green at 34. You have him at 20. I have Tyler Boyd at 25. You have Tyler Boyd at 40. So we're we we both like a wide receiver in that offense. We Which just one wins. Right. We don't know. Um, play, playoff schedule for both of them is home against the Cowboys. Dome uh, home. Oh, sorry. No, it's not. Cowboys playing the dome, but they're outside in Cincinnati home against the Steelers and then at Texans. So there's your dome in week 16 um, for the for the fa- fantasy finals. Um, so. I, I do not like the home against the Steelers um, with that Steelers defense um, potentially no. going to be the best fantasy Teeing defense in football this TV. year. Yeah. So I, I'm i not as high on A.J. Green as you are. I would prefer Tyler Boyd, especially at the ADPs where they're going. A uh, difference of three rounds is, is pretty significant, or it's really two and a half. But um, I, I would rather have Tyler Boyd, um, who's proven the last two years that – He's really good. like he's had over a thousand yards his first two years in the league, and if teams are going to shade more to AJ Green and let Tyler Boyd kind of work in the slot, um, and I believe they they have T Higgins who is another beast who's another burner on the outside. So I I, I do like Tyler Boyd. I, I think he's going to have a ton of targets, um, but I'm I'm kind of for lack of a better way to put it, I'm a little bit down on AJ Green only because he. Hasn't done it for a couple of years. Yeah, totally understandable. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have while while I have AJ Green ranked that high, I don't know if I will pick him versus like if there's somebody else around him that has played last year, or if yeah. I'm gonna pivot to a different tier or something. Um, I just think that if he plays a full season, that he could very well end up as a wide receiver too. Uh, however, I would also not be surprised if Tyler Boyd ends up as even if AJ plays the whole season, I wouldn't be surprised if Tyler Boyd ends up as a low end wide receiver to flex wide receiver flex caliber player. Um, yep. You know, I said earlier that he did all the those things last year while AJ Green wasn't on the field. However, um, he's shown that he can produce with AJ on the field, which does matter. Um, mm-hmm. So I would, it's, it's all about, and, and there's another wide receiver pair that comes to mind here. You have the name recognition and then you have the newer young guy and you pay for the name recognition early or you can draft somebody that's probably going to be probably going to do just about as well that you can get three to four rounds later and the other combo i'm thinking of is amari and michael gallup because oh I, I actually thought you were gonna say odell and um jarvis same jarvis that yeah too. that's like, another like good one very, right right very very similar where you get the name or can you you know potentially get even though nobody's for, ranking for odell Valley. that early but everybody's still taking him in the third but yeah F's right. the same right. same thing yep um and uh, yeah, especially in Cincy, I Cincy, I think, you know, Tyler Boyd has a great chance to really show up and establish himself as the clear cut number one, um, given the fact that he's been playing football. But yeah, and, and when AJ Green went out uh, in in 2018, um, like Tyler Boyd was was basically having the exact same stat lines as AJ yeah. Green was. And then I feel like he fell off a little bit once AJ Green left because defenses were focusing on him. Yeah. Um, but after last year being the the clear number one guy, um, ninety catches, almost you know, ten fifty from a yard standpoint, five touchdowns, um, one hundred and forty eight targets is just delicious. Yeah. It so is. and they basically have the exact same offense, and they they have in theory a better quarterback. If, you know, slot players run down the field more, it's shorter throws. They're more, generally more conservative throws. And so that does fit more of a rookie 
um, passing scheme where he's going to try to get it out quick. And generally that's going to be the slot guy or a tight end or a running back underneath. So that that's why I'm higher on Boyd and I'm, I'm calling AJ green, the, uh, the Sacco. There you go. All right. Uh, moving on. My Sacco is Kenny G Kenny Galladay. Um, can we get a saxophone riff? Man, I wish you could just hit that. Dude, button. That'd I would be great. I, I, I don't know. Is this embarrassing or not embarrassing? I played the saxophone for seven years. So like, like alto sax or like I baritone sax, alto tenor and, and baritone. I played regular band and jazz band. So we want a little funky riff. I could probably make it happen. Um, although I don't think I'd ever am- admit to playing the saxophone. I certainly will not going to do it on this show, <laughs> but, but yeah, having a nice little saxophone riff, we need to make some riffs or something. We need to figure it out. I, I feel like our instruments fit us well. You, you being the saxophone player and me being the trombone player. Oh, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if there's, I, I don't know why I feel like that fits both of our personalities, but I, I can see it. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, Kenny <laughs> Galladay consensus number six ESPN has him at 10 ADP. He is going 24th overall. So right at the end of the second round as wide receiver seven. Um, there's such a good chance he finishes lower than that. Um, he was 21st in targets last season with 116. He was 25th in targets a game at just over seven. The team was 17th in pass attempts. He was 20th in target share at just over 20%. Um, he had 65 catches for under 1,200 yards. What propped up Kenny G scoring? He had 11 touchdowns. Um, but to counteract that, he had six single point games. His first eight games were with Matt Stafford. He had 62 targets, 35 catches for 640 yards, seven of his 11 touchdowns, and only two single point games. As a 16 game season, that would equate to 124 targets, 70 catches, almost 1,300 yards, and 14 touchdowns. So just incredible numbers. If if he uh you assume that those first eight games are carried forward um it's just he just didn't he had like 21st in targets i don't want that 25th in targets a game especially that early you you have to guarantee the target share right you you have to yeah like for lack of a better way to put it you just have to trail the targets like you just like follow them see who's getting them and that that way you have a better floor. If you're taking him at wide receiver one and you're so what you're taking uh, Saquon or McCaffrey or Zeke and then following up with, with Kenny G um, which is a potential question mark. Um, yeah. Where, where you'd be looking at taking a, a Kittle or Kelsey if, if they're still available or, you know, taking Mahomes or, you know, just doubling up on another running back um, or just a different it's, wide receiver. It's a question mark. Yeah. Like Allen Robinson had 40 more targets last season and is ranked lower than Kenny G. But Kenny D Kenny G just had all these touchdowns. So I'm just worried that the regression monster is coming for Kenny Galladay and that unless he sees a an increase in target share, granted he won't have Mr. Blau throwing him the ball for half the season, I hope. Blau. He'll have, you know, Matt Stafford for 16 games, but man, I, I'm just not, I'm not there on Kenny G. Yeah. And I mean, again, Stafford was on pace for 38 touchdowns before he got hurt last year. Mm. And so, you know, Kenny G can keep up that touchdown number if Stafford is going to throw close to 40 of them. Yeah. Like that's, that's not that big of a of a dip. And, you know, we, we've already talked about David Blau and Jeff Driscoll throwing him the ball and Stafford is considerably better than, than both of them. And so it just comes down to, can, can you pull the trigger on him? I mean, I, I think I haven't ranked the six overall wide out. Um, 
he was he was six last year, but 20th in targets is um, can can be tough to overcome. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's move on to some sleepers, shall we? I like sleeping. I like it's sl- one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> Well, you better get as much in as you can because you have a you have a little one due next week. And I don't think you're going to be doing a whole lot of sleeping. Mm, so let me talk about my sleeper then. Um, it's a guy that everybody's heard of. Um, he is a future NFL Hall of Famer. Um, his name is Larry Fitzgerald. And so it's not not very often that you get to talk about a future Hall of Famer being a sleeper. But here we are and it's happening. So you're welcome, everybody. Um Larry Fitzgerald was the 37th ranked wide receiver last year. He had the 17th most catches. He had the 25th most targets. He had the 34th most yards and four touchdowns. Now, Jason, I have a question for you. Can't wait. He's been in the NFL for 16 years. How many years do you think he's had under 100 targets in his career? One zero. I was he's I never it, yeah. he's never had under a hundred targets in a year ever, ever. Okay, there were thirty wide receivers who had a hundred or more targets last year. He was one of them because again, he's never had under a hundred yards or sorry under under a hundred targets in a year. His current ADP is. Basically not even getting drafted. Uh, he's he's the 66th wide receiver going in drafts. His ADP is like in the middle of the 14th round. And he's never had under 100 targets in a year. And so I'm, I'm giving some love to the future Hall of Famer. He's never... So he's played in all 16 games each of the last five years. In his 16-year career, he's missed a total of six games in his entire career. So he's going to stay healthy. He's going to be on the field. He'll play. Again, he's missed six games out of 256 games. That's insane. He's never played with somebody like DeAndre Hopkins before. He had Anquan Bolden for a long period of time, but that's not DeAndre Hopkins. Last year, Larry Fitzgerald was on the field for 85% of snaps, primarily operating out of the slot. Um, And yes, I I did just call AJ Green old because he's going to be 32. Larry Fitzgerald's going to be 37. I get that. Um, Th- three, seven, 37. Yeah, that's correct. You have a 37 year old as a, as a fantasy sleeper. football sleeper. That's correct. Now who's not a quarterback. Uh, no, that, that is, that's accurate. Um, so just, just for comparison's sake, because it's fun. Um, when Jerry Rice was 37 years old, oh, cause I'm sure. Right. You, oh, please. <laughs> No, no, this is not, this is, they're not that big of a difference between the two. I believe they have the number one and number two catches of all time. Well, correct. uh, Sure. I don't know. Larry Fitzgerald's 37 years old. I'd hope so. Yeah. And Jerry, Jerry Rice, when he was 37, what did he do? He had 124 targets, 67 catches, 830 yards and five touchdowns. So if he were to do what Jerry Rice did when he was 37, that would have put him at wide receiver 36 last year. And again, Flexible. Larry Fitzgerald was right. And Larry Fitzgerald was wide receiver 37 last year. So th- like, there's no reason why he can't duplicate that. And he should be rostered um, again. Larry Fitzgerald is currently the 66th wide receiver going in drafts. And he was in the, he was in the thirties from a, from a points perspective. I expect him to be there again. He's going to far outperform his ADP. Um, I currently have Larry as the 46 wide receiver. I should probably bump him up a little bit. Honestly, uh, you have Larry Fitzgerald as the 70th ranked wide receiver. Uh, ESPN has him at 60. I will not be drafting I, him. That's fine. Um, and I just one last point for Arizona. They threw the ball just over 60% of the time, which was the 12th most in football. Um, so I think there's plenty of targets to go around there. And if for the first time in Larry Fitzgerald's career, he's not going to be getting all of the attention from the defense. And that's going to be going to DeAndre Hopkins. And Larry Fitzgerald is going to cook. So um, you're not worried I, about Christian Kirk here at all? No, I'm not. Okay. 
So Larry Fitzgerald, sleeper, put it down. And he's just been around for so long that everybody's just like, oh, it's Larry Fitzgerald, whatever. But um, I guarantee you people will be starting him at some point this year. I want to make a bet that Larry Fitzgerald fi- finishes outside of the top 36 at the position. Will you give me 40? 40? Yeah, you have him ranked at 70. I have him ranked at 46. All right, I'll give you 40. His ADP is the 66th wide receiver. I'll give you 40. So give me 40. All right, I'll put that down. Deal. All right. Now that that's over. (laughs) It also... Oh, are you gonna are you gonna talk about Ty Hilton being a sleeper here or no? No, I'm gonna talk about a different future NFL Hall of Famer. Oh no! <laughs> oh God! Alvin Lazard, future oh, NFL I'll, I'll, Hall I'll of Famer. Bet you a million dollars. Uh, what a million <laughs> a million dollars? What? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you like twenty to one odds too. That what? That Alan Lazard will not be an NFL Hall of Famer. Okay, I'll take those odds. Deal. How, how so much are we doing? You're going to give a million dollars. You're going to give me a million dollars. No, 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 no. I'm not going to bet you a million. I want the million at 21 odds. Okay, so that's what, 50 grand? Yeah, there you go. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Alan Lazard is a an excellent sleeper candidate this season again Packer fans I'm making up for all of my past hate shade whatever have whatever you want to call it and uh, we're going to show a little love he is consensus 63rd overall ESPN our consensus ranking has him at 63rd ESPN has him ranked at 72 his current ADP is 163 overall which is the middle of the 14th round wide receiver 64 aka free but getting drafted in like the very last round Alan Lazard right he's he's basically going a couple picks before Larry Fitzgerald which is just a travesty right well, it's not a travesty. It's right that, no, it is. that that's where he's going because people want the better looking future Hall of Famer on their team than Larry Fitzgerald. They're okay. taking the younger, better looking version. Now, Do you, if, if anybody remembers about uh, 25 minutes ago, we were talking about Devontae Adams and how there was literally no other people to target on that team. <laughs> but uh, here, here we are highlighting Alan Lazard. Before you so rudely interrupted me, <clears throat> quick shout out to Jeff Lambert of going for uh, Also the host of armchair fantasy football and fantasy pros contributor for assisting with some of these stats and information. Um, Alan Lazard. I went to Iowa state. I had the pleasure of watching him play football. I knew he was good at it and he's excellent. Then Now he plays for the Packers. And I was like, oh, my God, I just hope he gets a chance. I just hope he gets a chance. And you know what? It took like until the last what? It took until week six until he basically got on the field. But he really he really didn't even get much playing time until like the last final three weeks of the season where he played more than 75 percent of snaps in those final three games. He had more than or he had 20 targets. MVS Marquez Valdez Scantling saw his usage go from 80% to less than 20% in that time because they finally pulled the trigger. Aaron Rodgers got up and said in post game interviews, anybody that wanted to ask him, Alan Lazard needs to be on the field more. And guess what? It took all season long, but at the end of the season and into the playoffs, guess who was on the field? Alan Lazard. <clears throat> Wow. Jimmy Graham is gone. Was third in third in Green Bay catches. Geronimo Allison was gone. Was fourth in Green Bay catches. Green Bay didn't draft a receiver. You got 
bunches of funches. You got MVS who Alan Lazard already leaped. So Alan Lazard is the number two receiver on this team. And I don't really think that there's much debate about it in his final three games. He had 20 catches or 20 targets, 11 catches, 130 yards and a score as a season that would come out to 107 targets, just shy of 60 catches about 700 yards and five and a half touchdowns, which would have made him wide receiver 42. Now, if you just look at the final two games, he had 17 targets, nine catches, 115 yards in a score as a season that comes out to 140 targets, 72 catches. Stop. Oh, my God. More than You're, 900 yards, more than 900 so yards, eight scores, which would have made him wide receiver 24 on the season, which is coincidentally <sighs> where Devonte Adams finished last year. The Packers have four years supported two receivers, Greg Jennings, Jordy Nelson, like Devonte Adams, Jordy Nelson. Like they've supported two guys. Come on. I am saying that Randall Alan Cobb. Lazard is the second guy. That's all I'm saying is Alan Lazard is the second guy. And he's a fantastic sleeper dart throw at the end of drafts. You should take Larry Fitzgerald. Oh, well, all right, fine. I'll let him scratch your 40th overall. Let's do heads up. Who finishes oh, higher? Oh, please. Oh, that's much better. You think I, so? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm all in on that one. All right. Wow. Yeah, Al, Alan Lazard doesn't, doesn't do it for me. You don't um, know anything about him. You know, I, just for that, I'm going to go on whatever that website is, and I'm going to pay him $15 to tell you that you're bad at fantasy football. <laughs> you know that app? You're on Cameo? Yeah, he's on Cameo. Yeah. Hey, tell my podcast co-host that he sucks because he thinks you suck. I literally, really hope Larry Fitzgerald's not on that website selling himself out for $15 to record a 30-second video. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that tells you pretty much everybody everybody what you need to know about these two players on this list. That's not his actual rate. That's not his actual rate. You cannot do I was I was exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna tell you what his rate is. I'm, pull, I'm pulling it up. It's 75. Oh wow, that's respectable. Oh, 75 dollars. I would really hope Larry Fitzgerald is not on that. Oh man, let's see, Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, he is not. Just from a quick quick search, but that's fit, oh no, is he? Uh, no, he's not. I mean, why would he be? He has all, he has all the money from playing in the league for 20 years. (laughs) Yeah, no, it it popped up. Get personal, get personalized messages from your favorite. And then Larry and then Fitzgerald is also in there. Uh, but it's Larry Thomas. No, it's it's Larry Thomas, AKA the soup Nazi. (laughs) Oh, well, that's different. No soup for you. That's, that's what, uh, yeah. I wonder if he charges more than Alan Lazard. <laughs> yeah, I think it's sixty five dollars actually. Oh, so, Anna, so Alan's got him by ten bucks. There you yeah, go. Pretty close. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, give, give me Fitzgerald all, all day, every day. He's never had under a hundred targets, and Lazard has never had over a hundred targets. So there you go. Great. Uh, did 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 you want to do uh, Sacco story time real quick to to wrap this up? Sure. What's uh, play so, your story on me? Tell me about yeah, Sacco so I, story time. Yeah, so I yeah story time with the Sackos. Um, I have a bone to pick with the world. So I, I was putting uh, straw in the mow today with my parents. Um, What's a mow? And, it's just like the upper part of a barn. We've that's just what we've always called it. You can look that up and fact check me. We've just always called it like I'm not going to. Mow, I believe you. I just didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's just just in a barn. The thing that's always driven me crazy, and this is for my mother who said she's on like she's listening to the podcast. She's on episode four as background noise. Um, Hi, Mama Krog. People, people have always said like people don't know the difference between straw and hay. And it's and it drives farmers crazy. You drink out of straw. 
you can drink out of a straw. It is not str- straw and hay is like, so straw. What do you know what the difference is? No, do you have any idea? I have no clue. So straw is generally not editable Ed, ed edible, not there editable, ed, edible. Uh, and do you know what colors straw is versus what color hay is? Straw is gold. Hay is green. That's correct. But so like if you were, there's an episode in the office where it's like Dwight's hay place or whatever. Oh, where it's he, he, straw. And it's all straw. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's, that's not acceptable. Cause and nobody so, like, knows what straw lot, is. Yeah, but they should. So like straw is more of like the bedding or what you'll plant grass under and hay is what you actually feed animals. Uh, so there is um, that office episode where that will now be ruined for you. Hopefully, whenever you see straw and he calls it hay, that's incorrect. So that's my story. I don't have a story to top that. <laughs> okay. So I, I mean, I, I was doing it today. I it was inhaling all the straw, which might explain what happened this episode. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, again, we, we want to we're, we're going to focus next time on kind of the people that we don't like quite as much from an ADP standpoint. Um, so we're, we're just looking forward to kind of getting we're inching our way to the football season starting. We got like a month and a half. Like we're almost there and we're going to drag everybody with us. Yeah. We've been doing this for three months already. It's unbelievable. We're finally, finally getting to the start of the season and hundreds and hundreds of downloads in countless countries. What's up Canada? A we're in double digit downloads for Canada this month alone. I heard they're real big Fitzgerald fans up there. uh? Don't you know? And so on that note, we're going to be transferring to (laughs) our social media place. Please follow us on social media, social media. Uh, Visit our website, the fantasy football sackos.com for all of the latest things, sackos, all of our draft rankings, everything you need. Um, And on that note, I'm going to get out of here and go bail a bed of hay straw. Good night. Good night, Larry Fitzgerald. You're the best sleeper in the whole world. I love you, little buddy. Go to sleep. Okay.